Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Thanks, Mark, uh, and good morning again, everyone. Uh, there is no doubt that local and state governments have pressures of providing vital services and drinking resources. That being said, Colony continues to make those tough decisions and remains a community of choice for residents and businesses alike. Here with us in her third term, Paula will share her agenda for the new term, address how the town is handling community service and taxes, and talk about business retention and attraction, among other issues. She also will answer your questions on topics that are important to you and your business. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Colony Town Supervisor, Paul Mahan. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everybody. Everybody's up bright and early. This is a little chilly out there. Can you see me over this podium here? <laughs> the... Uh, the lift was about this high, so I'd probably be tumbling into the table here, so I'll try to put this down a little bit here. Okay. I really want to uh, thank you, Mark, and, uh, and thank our sponsors today, HMS Agency and CBRE, for uh, having us here this morning to uh, give, give you an idea of where we were in 2011 and where we're headed for 2012. It is truly a pleasure to join you this morning. This is my fifth State of the Town Address, as Mark uh, just stated. And uh, once again, Mark, thank you very much. And uh, also, Alan Crafton, thank you very much. And all of your staff that worked with you to put this uh, event on this morning. Uh, I also uh, have to give a shout out to a couple of these tables here. Are staff from the Town and Colony who do an outstanding job and I'm really happy they could be here this morning. Thank you. <laughs> and most importantly I want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here today. I know how how precious your time is and your commitment to Colony makes it one of the best towns in the nation. I'm proud of what we've achieved by working together and I look forward to working collaboratively with you and making even more progress in Colony as we move into the future. I'm really excited to begin my third term as Town Supervisor. I'm honored that uh, uh, by the trust that has once again been placed in me. When I first assumed office in 2008, you probably remember that I vowed uh, to bring fiscal stability back to the town. I'm very proud to report that we have succeeded. I'm especially proud that we have eliminated the town's huge inherited deficits in just four years. Let me just repeat that so we have it straight. We've eliminated the town's deficits in just four years. That's a huge accomplishment and it took a lot of hard work and determination on the part of a lot of people and the community as a whole. And now uh, I hope we be can begin the process of building some much needed reserves uh, to provide the town with some flexibility and security in the future. I can tell you it has been very challenging to run a town the size of Colony with no rainy day fund. And speaking of rainy days, I'd li like to take a minute to acknowledge all those who helped us uh, deal so successfully with the effects of Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. We were fortunate here in town uh, to be spared the worst of the storms, but there were still some very significant impacts townwide. Thanks to the town employees and volunteer firefighters who worked li literally around the clock, our response was excellent. I'm proud of the job they all did to keep us safe, so please join me now in recognizing the efforts of the members of our police, emergency management, our EMS, our fire services, public works departments, and all of our volunteer fire departments who worked tirelessly throughout the storm. <laughs> I 
I'm also very proud that Colony, once again, ranked in the top 10 of the nation's safest communities. As you all know, it, it's quite challenging to be number one forever. We had that pleasure two years in a row, and uh, it was certainly not easy to achieve. And uh, you know, you can't be there all the time. But as I said to Chief Heider uh, in conversation one day, if we stay in the top 10, I'll be very pleased, because that means we're a, a safe community. And we did that and uh, continue to main that, maintain our position in the top 10. Certainly a major achievement. Public safety has been one of my top priorities since day one, and I assure you will, it will always be a top priority. That's why I remain, remain committed to, to funding programs that strengthen and support the community, including those for our youth and seniors. Colony, Colony's police chief, Steve Heider, who couldn't be with us this morning, has always been the first to say that public safety is more than a matter of policing. It requires the involvement of the entire community. All of you helped make Colony a safe place to live and do business, and I thank each and every one of you for helping us to achieve our goals. Your business, professional, and volunteer efforts, efforts have helped to build a remarkably stable and supportive community in Colony. And today we have Deputy Chief John Teal representing the Colony Police Department. Please join me in giving a special recognition to the brave men and women of the Colony Pol Police Department. And thank you, John, for being here this morning. <laughs> and Colony has also been blessed with an EMS department recognized many times over for excellence. Among its many successes, Colony's EMS has consist consistently reduced the time it takes to respond to emergency calls. Last year, as part of a study of the locations of emergency calls, our EMS staff began routinely positioning emergency vehicles in strategic locations throughout the town. This allowed for even faster response times. As the demographics have changed over time, we felt it was important to conduct a study to determine ways to improve the EMS services. This study, led by Deputy Chief Peter Berry, is being conducted by members of our EMS and police departments, and I will be presenting the results later this year with Peter. We are always looking for ways to improve our service delivery, and this study will provide us valuable information for the future. And if any of you who have ever had to call, uh, make an emergency call for help, uh, you know how important this is and what a professional uh, staff we have. Um, we get letters all the time from people, you know, thanking, thanking our department for uh, really saving lives and doing, doing wonderful things. Uh, and Deputy Chief Peter Berry is uh, with us here today representing the EMS department. Thank you, Peter. We're also fortunate to live and do business in a town with such excellent fire department services. Our fire services staff and our 12 volunteer fire departments throughout the town assure our residents of an outstanding response to fires and other serious incidents. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our volunteer firefighters and their families who give up a lot for their outstanding service. And once again this year, I also want to acknowledge a huge debt of gratitude to our town employees. For 2012, we asked our town departments to reduce their budgets by 15%, while at the same time safeguarding the services that we provide. I'm proud to say we achieved this goal, but we could not have done it without the flexibility and creativity of our town employees. Change is never easy, and I want to thank all of our town employees for their hard work in helping us find new ways to deliver critical town services with an even sharper eye on the bottom line. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> now as we reflect on where Colony is headed in 2012 and beyond, nothing has been more productive than the landfill operating agreement we signed last year. As you probably know, in July the town entered into a 25-year operating agreement with Waste Connections a forward-thinking and community-minded corporation that is a leader in the waste management industry. 
But let me just say once for the record, and perhaps uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I may have heard this several times, the town still owns the landfill. I know you may have heard otherwise, but we own it. The landfill operating agreement will generate more than $100 million over 25, the 25-year 25 life of the contract, and it's a great step forward for the town for several reasons. First, it allowed us to secure one of the town's most valuable assets for years to come, while at the same time saving taxpayers millions of dollars in current and future financial obligations. These obligations included a cost of approximately $20 million for the future landfill closure. The agreement also means we need not incur debt for future capital improvements and equipment at the landfill, and that is a huge savings for us going forward. In the past, the majority of our, of our capital plan uh, for all of our infrastructure and our large uh, purchases, uh, mainly the money was going to the landfill. And so now we are able to address some other needs uh, throughout the town. Second, the agreement provides Colony with guaranteed annual payments over the life of the agreement. That means that the town can rely on guaranteed annual landfill revenue for 25 years or more at a time when landfill revenues have decreased and are likely to continue decreasing as the waste management industry becomes even more competitive. In addition, the town retains its portion of the waste to energy revenue now generated at the landfill. The conservative figure, yearly figure, is about $750,000 a year. And previously, this waste to energy revenue was used to offset landfill operating costs. So this is another very positive o outcome uh, for, for the town. Third, the landfill operating agreement has allowed the town to el eliminate the $21 million inherited deficits through 2010, paving the way for the town to begin building the reserves necessary for sound fiscal management. Despite the rumors and false information, the deficit has been eliminated and we move forward from a position of much greater strength. Currently, we are closing our books for 2011 and we are cautiously optimistic that we are continuing on a positive trend despite the weak economy. The landfill operating agreement, however, is only one of the actions we've taken to put the town back on sound financial ground. Um, and I, I might add that we recently um, had a visit from representatives from Saratoga County. They actually have uh, a landfill that they can't operate, it's too expensive. Uh, they've never opened it, and so, so they were looking at uh, our agreement and uh, the amount of time it took to research it and what, what needs to be done. So we had a very nice uh, visit with Saratoga County who are uh, looking to model after what we've done. So uh, once again, it's nice to be uh, first uh, in, in that uh, move to uh, look at this uh, pr public-private partnership, which benefits the town greatly. Um, our committee that worked on this uh, uh, worked tirelessly for a long time, uh, almost a year and a half, to get this done. And uh, several members of the committee, uh, some of the committee members are here today, Jack Cunningham, our Commissioner of Public Works, Mike Majuli, our town attorney, uh, Craig Blair, our controller, uh, and uh, there were several others uh, on the committee, and did, they did a fantastic job. It was nice to get some sleep, though, after that was done, I'll tell you. It's a long haul. Ugh. Anyway, I'm very proud to report that in 2010 and 2011, we reduced the town budget by almost $2 million by taking an extremely conservative approach to every expenditure and following our 10-year financial plan. Originally, the 10-year financial plan was put into place uh, with our controller, and uh, we went down to New York City, met with Moody's, and we had our plan with us, which they approved, uh, looking at the 10-year plan to eliminate the deficit. So being able to do that within four years was outstanding. So we're really very, very happy about that. We also reduced the size of town government through attrition, early retirement, and departmental consolidations. For 2012, I'm proud to report that we will again realize significant savings in the town's budget. 
we will save about $1 million on salaries and wages and $2.88 million in contractual expenses. For instance, the transfer of former landfill employees into the Department of Public Works means that the town is now able to perform services that were previously contracted out, such as ta the town's curbside lawn and leaf pickup and some snow plowing and salting routes, to name a few. Even though the town has now achieved fiscal stability, almost impossible to imagine four years ago, we never face challenges in the year ahead. We will again strive to live within the 2% tax cap, which is not an easy task. Fortunately, sales tax revenues are beginning to rebound, and that will help our uh, bottom line, but we also expect to see continued increases in health insurance and mandated contributions to the New York State Pension Fund. So for the f foreseeable future, we must continue to be very conservative. And another very important development in 2011 was that the town's total assessed va value increased by $31.7 million, allowing us to actually reduce the 2012 property tax rate by a half percent. This is a result of new residential and commercial construction, which underscores the fact that Colony continues to be a place where people want to live and do business. Although the economy is still challenging in many ways, it's encouraging to see the variety of new development occurring in Colony. In fact, we have 1,100 new residential approvals in the pipeline now. And I'm pleased to say that they include the full range of residential options, including single family houses, townhouses, condominiums, and senior housing. The healthy level of new development in our town is also a reflection of the pro-development policies we have implemented in the last four years. We are continually analyzing and streamlining our project review process so projects can move forward more quickly. Recently, we have instituted CityWorks, an online tracking system, and are actively working to make the permitting process more user-friendly. The suggestions we received from our Small Business Advisory Council over the past few years have helped us to increase the efficiency of both our planning and building processes. At this time, I'd like to thank Diane Conroy Lasavita for her services chairing the Small Business Advisory Council. Where are you, Diane? Thank you. In looking back, one of the first projects to benefit from the use of the, the town designated engineers was the Fresh Market, which went from concept to final approval in a matter of months. The colony location has proved very profitable for the company. Perhaps Trader Joe's looked at the profitability of the uh, Fresh Market before deciding to locate in Colony, which a lot of people are very excited about, I might, might say. Uh, I've heard uh, they do very careful re research before expanding into any new location. And now we're excited about the rest of the Fresh Market Commons. It's being developed in uh, both a new home goods and a new Hallmark store will be located there. And we look forward to these stores opening very soon. In addition, uh, around the corner uh, from Fresh uh, Market, uh, we anticipate a Sabre Brazilian Steakhouse to open at the former uh, Marinara restaurant site on 155. Their plans call for extending the look of the landscaping at the Fresh Market Commons to their location around the corner. This is the type of development and the, the look of the development that we've been seeking. We're also seeing other significant commercial construction. This year we will see a new 20,000 square foot office headquarters on Sand Creek Road which will be home to Funeral Directors Support Services, Inc., and a truly, truly beautiful new rumor salon and spa on Route 9, completing Phase 2 of the Village of New Loudon project. We will also see a new Crisofuli warehouse on Old Niskiuna Road and a new Fairfield Inn on Forts Ferry and Wade Road Extension. Other projects in the works are several new banks and the Capcom Federal Credit Union headquarters on Loudon Road. This year, we, were all, we will also see a major expansion of the Latham Price Chopper on Route 9 to become Price Chopper's flagship store, expanding its retail operation by 10,000 square feet, as well as creating an exciting new cooking school and outdoor patio at the front of the store. 
As most of you know, new construction is certainly an indicator of success, but, but we also constantly strive to promote healthy redevelopment of abandoned and underutilized existing properties. We were very excited this year to learn of the proposed redevelopment of the old Starlight Theater. Some of you may remember it uh, as the Starlight or the, uh, uh, let's see, it was called the Ten at one time, and I think at one time the Col Colony Coliseum. We saw a lot of shows up there. And, uh, but this is being redeveloped into a high-tech office complex, which will revitalize a long-neglected site with a minimum impact on traffic. This year, we'll also bring redevelopment of the old Dakota Steakhouse, uh, that site on uh, Route 7, and that's going to be a Joe's Crab Shack, another new presence that has excited colony residents. Bless you. We were also excited this year to see demolition of the building commonly known as Sebastian's. For, for many years, this has been a persistent eyesore on Route 7. <laughs> we refer to it as the pink building. So we no longer see the pink building. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> demolition and removal of this unsightly structure was made possible only after the town adopted a tough new abandoned and vacant real property law in 2011. And uh, since that has been filed, we have a little bit more to work with. With uh, Mike Majuli, our town attorney, uh, took this on as a, a challenge, and uh, the new law is much stronger. We have several successful redevelopment projects on Wolf Road, including Trader Joe's and Ted's Fish Fry, a new Hanoush Jewelers at the former Lexington Grill, and a new addition and facade renovation at Denoyer Chevrolet. The new Stewart shop on Route 9 is open. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful if you haven't seen it yet. And there are a few other new Stewarts in the works. And of course, we're going to want them to look like the one on Route 9. So, All of this activity tells me that we are still considered a great place in which to do business. Understanding that redevelopment is a key component to our continued economic growth in 2011, we instituted a shortened review process for redevelopment projects under an acre in size, which also provides for automatic referral to the Colony IDA to determine their eligibility for special financing options. We have consistently focused redevelopment efforts along the Route 5 corridor with notable success. A corridor study completed in 2011 demonstrated that Route 5 is bordered by some of the region's most densely populated residential areas and that future development needs first and foremost to be compatible with the surrounding neighborhoods. We also have a key component or a key economic development tool in the Railroad Avenue Re Revital Revitalization Plan, excuse me, in which the towns participating with Albany County and the town of Gilderland. This year, among several redevelopment projects that came to fruition on Route 5, we have a new Futia's formal wear at 1285 Central Ave, which was previously an abandoned dry cleaners. Mox Treasures Antiques came to an existing property at 1274 Central Ave, and the South Colony Speed Wash opened for business in a remodeled property at 2017 Central Ave. As you can see, we've been working hard to turn our economic development goals into realities but we still have work to do. We're hopeful this year that we will finally see major renovation of the Latham a circle, a traffic circle by the Department of Transportation, and we continue to focus on redevelopment of some of our more challenging sites, such as the Latham Circle Mall and Tobin's First Prize. As a result of the economic development efforts, we estimate that about 1,200 new jobs were created in Colony last year. These included jobs created by new businesses, by expansion, uh, expansion of existing businesses, and construction jobs. I think that's a pretty good track record when the entire nation is struggling to create jobs and return people to work. I'd like to take a moment to thank our Planning and Economic Development Director, Joe LaCivita, and our planning staff as well as the town's planning board for their continued efforts to bring smart growth and positive change to Colony. Thank you, Joe. It's really exciting to see so much new building, which is a reflection of the many benefits we offer as a town. 
We are an unusually beautiful and well-maintained town with one of the lowest tax rates in the region. We have outstanding schools, our many beautiful town parks offer a wonderful range of options for recreation and outdoor activity, and we offer many other outstanding services to our taxpayers. But in a large town, we must be ever vigilant about maintaining our infrastructure, and I want to comment on the great success so far of our five-year paving and drainage improvement program. After just two years, we have completed 74 storm water management projects and repaved more than 26 miles of road. Incidentally, I think uh, over the last uh, several months, I think I walked all 26 miles <laughs> and uh, found a lot of happy residents to have their uh, roads repaved. Um, they, they come running out their doors. It's something that means a lot to them. And I'm glad that uh, you know our plan is working well. Uh, thank you, Jack, for all the work with staff uh, uh, on that project. And also in 2011, we received a grant from National Grid underwriting 65% of a project to install energy efficient light fixtures at Memorial Town Hall and then uh, uh, other buildings in town. With more than 10,000 in energy savings each year, the town will earn back its $17,000 investment in less than two years. This project, along with previously completed projects, the new HVAC system at the library and the new boiler at the community center are part of the long range energy savings plan. In tough economic times, it can be a temptation to let the inf infrastructure projects uh, simmer on the back burner, but we are committed to improving the town's infrastructure. And we will continue to search the alternative funding sources that can help us do the job with the least impact on our taxpayers. This year, we even hope to create some new infrastructure by building a new passive park on River Road. The plan is to demolish the old Latham water treatment plant. If you've been down River Road, you know where the plant is. Uh, the tanks will remain, but the building is coming down, and uh, it will be a, uh, you know, a green space passive energy park, or passive uh, park. And uh, this project is undertaken uh, in a partnership with the Colony IDA at no cost to the town. It'll expand the recreation opportuni opportunities along the uh, beautiful Mohawk River and at goals that are articulated in our comprehensive plan. A as we proceed into the future, we will also continue to work to position the town for success in the high-tech arena. That's one area in which you and the chamber have taken uh, the lead, and I hope the town can capitalize on the work you've done. We all need to be part of getting out the message that Colony is a great place for high-tech businesses to locate. We have unparalleled access to air, rail, water, and all the major highways, making us an obvious location for distribution of goods and services. And we have beautiful and ample housing, incredible parks, and proximity to every kind of cultural and recreational opportunities. The Colony IDA recently created uh, several new programs, such as Grow New York and Enhance New York. They're designed to provide incentives to high-tech and uh, research and development businesses looking to locate and colony. See Dan McCoy back there from the county. Thank you, Dan, for uh, making it this morning. The county executive. Appreciate you being here. We do work an awful lot with the county and the neighboring municipalities and our, our villages. Uh, uh, Frank is here today and Trustee Jack Murphy. Um, it's really a pleasure to do business, business with the professionals that uh, really like to sit down and, and talk about the issues and get things done. So I appreciate all the help that you give us. Uh, all, s all of us in the town of Colony remain committed to the goal of attracting new jo jobs to Colony, not only in the high tech se sector, but also in manufacturing. We now have applications before us from two manufacturing companies interested in locating in the town and we have uh, applications for expansion from two manufacturers already doing business here. Our, our outstanding schools, I'm a little biased, but, and proximity to several institutions of higher learning mean we can provide and nurture the educated workforce manufacturing and high tech companies require. We all participate in the process, making sure our children have every advantage for academic success. And the town continues to offer a variety of opportunities for young people to realize their full potential. 
On the other end of the spectrum, we have a very, very large senior population in the town of Colony. We provide a full range of programs and services designed to enhance the well-being of our town seniors as well as their families and caregivers. Our senior resources staff does a great job of advocating for the needs of seniors and helping them to live an active and as actively and independently as possible. I've heard many times that Colony is a great place to grow old because of the excellent quality of life offered to, to seniors. 2011 was a very productive year and together we've exceeded our expectations and achieved many important goals that will benefit us long term. We've embraced many challenges and, in turn, and turned them into opportunities that will help us to continue our progress far into the future. As you can see, the state of the town today is definitely much improved and stronger. I'm confident of great things ahead for Colony, and I look forward to working with all of you in 2012. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. If anyone has any uh, questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Two years in a row, no questions. Well, that tells us that we're covering all of the bases. I thank you so much. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.